going on everybody? My name is Northy and first off before we get into our review I do want to quickly uh, point out that the microphone quality right now is not too good I'm trying to fix it and figure out why exactly it's kind of poor right now But I thought I'd just kind of preface it with that because some of the videos in the future are gonna have this quality like it did previously. I've just tried to lower the volume so it's not as evident, but unfortunately the audio quality has gotten a little bit messed up. I'll be looking for a new microphone soon. So uh, hopefully sooner rather than later it'll be fixed. But we're gonna get into our round 14 team coach review. And honestly, I thought we had a decent week. I thought we were gonna be all right. Get ourselves a prize card maybe, but you can see right here, no prize card to look out for, which is a little, little, a little annoying. I don't think it was too high scoring of a week. I think just certain players let us down. Um, and obviously that's enough for some games and game modes to completely take you out of it But it happened in every single one this week unfortunately So we'll start with the star powers first and the ones to point out are probably Kelly and Parker Anderson had a pretty good game for his standard 78 points it's nothing crazy, but uh, I had a look at the game and he got himself involved during that last quarter So he saved himself a little bit. Luke Parker only had the 70 again a little disappointing from Sydney in general Their performance wasn't the greatest, but I uh, hope for Luke Parker to do a little bit more had a lot of shots at goal could have picked one off uh, so I give Anderson a bit more um, kind of slack I guess compared to Parker because Anderson his disposals and all his work was mainly done in the midfield while Parker had a lot of chances up forward to do something and much like a lot of Sydney none of that unfortunately happened but Carl Amon was absolutely our standout picked him out perfectly um, realistically if I picked Bradley Hill it would have been better but uh, I have a look here and Matt Crouch would have been the best pick here and I definitely wouldn't have remembered to pick him, that is for sure. No, Anderson was the best one here. Bonton Pelly did okay. 89 points is always good. Definitely a good decision, as it usually is with Bonton Pelly. And then we go over to Kelly, who unfortunately was our worst performer for the week. At 64 points as well. It's not that bad. It's just a shame that a double points player ended up being our worst player. You never really want that, but... At the same time, if our worst player is 64, I can somewhat live with that. But unfortunately, the latter cannot. We finished 71st this week. I really didn't think we'd finish that high. However, the good thing, we went down a spot. We've gotten ourselves back into the top 10 for star power. So at least there's that. I definitely wish we could have done a little bit better. Because you can see a lot of people in the top 20. We've got Bod, who I believe watches the channel. Teal33, Brian Go, we've got KB3. How's Lukey? Uh, Bomber Jason, Jason Collectibles. He's now ranked 17. He's catching up on me. And Tiger from Bazaar, who is ranked 20. A lot of people. Hi, Northy returns, which is always good to see. Uh, Minty Hawk, who I believe is Bo. Uh, he messaged me about finishing 6th here and in top 18. And I checked that before. He's in both of them. So, uh, congratulations to you, mate. You did what I did. Or wasn't able to do, sorry. And uh, got in both of them, which is great. Especially in the top 10 for each. That's great. But we've seen Tiger from... We've seen Tiger Tom Bazaar. Did I say Tiger from Bazaar before? I meant Tiger Tom Bazaar. We've seen him. We also have seen Brad Pitt before. We've seen that name around. Who else have we seen? I'm just trying to look throughout here. Ned McHenry we've seen. Big Swoops has come around. There's Bod, as we were talking before. But uh, unfortunately for us this week, it was the lack of 100-point performances. And the only one we got was a 101 from Amon. I don't think there was many amazing performances. But players like Callum Mills, I think if I had him, that would have been really good. Uh, Paddy Cripps even did all right. So him being in there would have been nice. He only got 96 as well. It's very tough with the buy round. You don't have as much choice and freedom as you would with uh, other rounds. But now we're out of the buy rounds. We've all got full choices again. It's going to be interesting to see what everyone's teams look like now as we get into the rest of the season. But uh, we'll check top team now. Uh, top four. This is a very, very interesting week. Now, a lot of it really came down to just hit or miss picks. Realistically, I should have picked Bond and Pelly. I think I was just trying to go for the Hail Mary with the Geelong pick, but credit to West Coast, they actually put up a fight, which is very scary as a North Melbourne fan because it probably means North are definitely finishing last this season. They do not look like winning a game, but West Coast taking Geelong that far, I think West Coast will get a game before North does, unfortunately. But Trevor Green ended up being the forward for the week with his seven goal performance, his new career high, which is great to see against the Doggies. That was just an absolute scoring dominant game very tough for defenders and unfortunately we had some GWS defenders in our uh, top 18 however Lockie Whitfield wouldn't have been a bad pick I think if we go over here Lockie Whitfield yeah 90 points he would have been our best one but Jordan Dawson takes it this week for the backman Boston was good um, unfortunately short finish was 77 which is kind of crazy considering that you know, I thought personally they were quite similar 
they looked like they had similar games, but apparently Lostin just completely outplayed him. The extra one percenters, I don't know if he got more marks. Let me just double check that. Uh, no, they had the same amount of marks. Uh, Lostin had one less disposal. I don't know where all these points came from. I have no clue. If the one percenters are really worth that much, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> it's a little strange, but a Brooklyn pick was actually that bad. Uh, it was between Wits and Riley O'Brien. They were actually up against each other. I even mentioned De Conin could have been good, but I think just the lack of hitouts, I think. Uh, the 24 hitouts from him. Draper didn't play terrible, but also 15 hitouts with the eight disposals. Not a winning recipe. You've got to find the right mix of players who can get disposals and get a lot of hitouts. Riley O'Brien, Riley O'Brien, sorry, probably had some of the most hitouts, but Tim English was by far the best one. However, unfortunately for him, he is now out again with some late concussion, um, or late symptoms for a late concussion. Uh, so he will be out. He's now officially in the concussion protocol. So it makes next week just as difficult. Uh, yeah, Tim English though, taking it out this week. I think I've got to pick him when he does come back. I think he's going to be the one we pick up. But we go to the midfield and a lot of players that we probably should have were not in there. Callum Mills wasn't actually the worst pick. Like, I'm not mad with my Callum Mills pick. However, I, it was between him and Laird for me, and Laird ended up being second. So it definitely should have been Laird. The 42 disposals, just nuts. 10 for marks and tackles. Uh, already gets him over 100, so absolutely no stress for him. And McRae. McRae ended up having one of those games where he actually got marks and tackles. Uh, he's averaging 8 so far per game. And obviously, with the amount of disposals he gets, I probably should also be putting him in a lot more. But Mills, I'm definitely not mad with the choice. I think it's mainly the Cameron, the Cameron pickup. Uh, I don't blame myself for picking him. However, I'm disappointed with the result because against the West Coast side that's at the bottom of the ladder, you'd expect things to go well for him. But just the one goal happened in the first half and then nothing from there. A little disappointing, but we will live. We go to top 18 now. Actually, before we do that, we've got to check the ladder. The ladder. You can see here we are still ranked 7. We actually didn't go up or down, which is really, really good. A lot of high scoring players over the season getting themselves even further up. Uh, I'm not sure whether there were people who went above and below us during it and we somehow managed to stay in the seventh spot But I am very very interested to see uh, just how things will go now it, The left hand side also confuses me. It's top 10, but I'm seeing number 12 in there Who's gotten themselves some points which is a little confusing because uh, that probably means two people missed out on the prize card Because I'm not seeing rank 8 or rank 2 uh, I don't know what happened there, but we're sitting at 4,630 points for the season. Rank 190 for the week, but I'm not too sure how to judge ranks for top four. Uh, I just try and aim for 400 points. 400 points is usually the aim. If you can get four 100s, that's great. Uh, Rory Laird definitely would have helped us, but then again, it wouldn't have helped us all that much. I think Vlosten out of Short and, Vlost, uh, Short and Vlosten would have been the better pick. Ruckman, I'm not too mad at. English obviously would have helped us a ton. I think it's mainly Laird and anyone but Cameron. <laughs> if we picked Bontempelli, things would have been looking a little nicer, but I don't think we would have gotten ourselves a top four. We could have been close, but I don't think a top 10 or a top four win would have happened. We've had the one top four win so far this season, and it was, we came first. We actually got the first pl place position. We just didn't get the prize back because top four is the only one you don't get a prize back in, which is quite annoying. But uh, we're going to go over to top 18 now. A uh, few letdowns here and there. As I mentioned, Short wasn't great. Boston was good though. Sinclair was pretty good too. Uh, he managed to get himself 89. There weren't really any 100-point scorers other than Jordan Dawson. So that's very interesting, but we did have Boston in there as well. Whitfield looks like he's trying to break out. He's getting a lot more disposals off that half-forward flank. Uh, when he got moved, it was almost like a change for him. But we went with Sam Taylor because he got 99 points the week before. He had 67. 67. That's really tough. After a 99-point week, that is a clean bait. I've been completely baited there. Blitzars with a 78, which wasn't terrible, but... I think the thing that would have killed a lot of people, Tom Stewart was 71. Nowhere near the best backman for the week. Uh, it's very interesting to see who exactly is breaking out at certain times. I think in order to get this so well, in order to do top four like really well, you have to know how players perform against certain teams and like which teams are good and bad in the certain moment. Very interesting, very, very interesting. But the back line was, I'd say poor. I wouldn't say it was as good as I was hoping. Boston and Sinclair were the really only two that did well. The rest of them were pretty much bang average. Uh, we go to the forward line though next. Obviously, Cameron, I mentioned before, wasn't great. But you can see here, we had three of the top six players in there. That's not bad shooting. Lynch had a great game. Bontempelli played well, and so did he. Like, that's really good for the forward line. It's often very difficult to 
Uh, sometimes some players will do well and others won't and the forward line can be such a, like a hit or miss every single week But Tom Hawkins 74 again, not terrible. We go down and he's right there But Kai was 73 and Cameron was 67, which is, you know what? It could have been a lot worse. I think it's a really good forward line. Obviously, we'd love to try and smash out the best forwards every single week. I think Himmelberg next week is going to make the switch. He is now a backman. And if he stays in the back line next week, he's going in my lineup 100%. He's getting more involved in the back line. Obviously, GWS aren't the greatest team this season, but he just gets more of the footy. And even in a game where defense really doesn't show as the 125 to 105 final score showed, he still gets a lot of the ball. So that's great for Himmelberg, uh, reviving his team coach season, I guess, but obviously that's not his aim. Great week for him, that's really good, as, as well as last week. He, legitimately, there could have been two, there's already two GWS players in the uh, homepage, you can see here. Toby Green, oh no, it wasn't. Well, it could have also been, oh no, it couldn't either. <laughs> Himmelberg is in the same position. That's fine, two GWS players doing great, but uh, I just know that Lockie Whitfield gets a lot of points, so I assumed that he would have been in the back. All good. We don't stress. Jordan Dawson ended up being the best one. We go to the midfield, though, and I think this is where it let us down. Kelly, as we saw, only the 64. That is super poor from him. We got some good ones, like I said. Mills, Laird, two nice pickups there. Walsh with the 91, which isn't really great. He looked like he was going to explode, and then kind of backed off, and took Miller, also not as explosive as I expected, with only 75 points. I don't know where all these low disposal games, well, at least for his terms, have gone, or, or how, where they've come from, but uh, I remember last season, you can see here, he averaged 101 points last, last year. Only the 89 so far, which is really disappointing for Took off a contract here. Uh, but I think he'll find a step. And obviously, Gold Coast are benefiting as a team a lot more. So I'm not going to blame him. There's nothing you can really blame him for. He's doing his job. But surprisingly, I think the biggest letdown of the week was the midfield. Midfield feels like it's always like super locked down. It feels like one you can always trust. And we just couldn't get it this week. It's unfortunate for sure. However, as I've mentioned, we're finally out of the buy round. So we've now got a full selection to go for. It's going to be interesting to see who bounces back the hardest now out of their buys and out of everything in general. Uh, but we go to the ladder for top 18 and we were ranked 62. Uh, really, really surprising stuff, honestly, this week. Uh, we were ranked 11. I believe we were last week. So we haven't moved there either. As I mentioned, Minty Hawk in there. He came sixth here. Bomber Jason, Jason Collectibles. He got himself in there again. He's only ranked 120 for uh, top 18. So his first kind of, you know, peek into the top 18. I'm not sure if he's uh, ever gotten here before. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, he finds himself in here. He's got the same score as some people. So I'm imagining he tied with some. But Nate McHenry, we've seen as well. Um, until 33. He just seems to be killing it everywhere he goes. He's ranked 6. Oh, I wish I was ranked 5 again for star powers, I believe. I wish I was up there because, man, I miss being in the top 5. I miss it so much. Our best hope is that we have an absolutely ripper top 4 week. We've got to try and pick him out. Now that we've got everyone involved again, we've got to pick him out. It's going to be interesting to see who uh, comes out on top next week. But that is all. No prize cards, unfortunately, but a lot of changes we can look at here. This forward line, I will change. Uh, we're not going to have both the Geelong forwards in here, but midfield will change up. Back line will change up, uh, all according to matchups and who's playing who. So, should be a fun one coming up next week. Uh, obviously, not as disastrous as last week, for sure. We actually went up one spot in one game mode that is a that is the change that has happened this week but let's just hope and pray that things go our way next week because man i am so missing the prize cards showing up it's so sad now but hopefully hopefully sometime soon they will be showing up again i believe the weekend starts on a thursday the game oh sorry the uh review or preview sorry for round 15 will be coming out on the friday it won't matter whether the game starts on thursday or not we like to do them on the Friday, just giving you guys a heads up. And also, if you've come this far, going to be doing a little stream afterwards, playing some Fall Guys. Uh, it's a game that, you know, not too difficult to kind of get involved with. Most people can play, and it's going to be free uh, free to play very soon. So hopefully you guys will be able to join, and we'll do these streams more often. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, Team Coach review for Round 14. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know down in the comments below how you went for the week, if I missed you. Uh, and as always... Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one, and goodbye.